A randomized study suggests that the oxygen does not improve important clinical endpoints in patients with stable moderate competent hyposemia. Long-term oxygen therapy greater than 15 to 18 hours slash day is prescribed in patients with severe resting hyposemia defined as the partial pressure of arterial oxygen, POW2, less than 60 mmHg or oxygen saturation, SPO2, measured by pulse ozymetry below 90%. More controversial is the prescription in patients with osimia day at rest greater than 60 mmHg, but presenting nocturnal desaturation or under stress. 1. A study, 2. Assessed the long-term efficacy of oxygen therapy in patients with stable COPT, who retired a moderate desaturation, oxyhemoglobin saturation of between 89% and 93%, or that they had a desaturation during exercise, walking test of 6 minutes, saturation less than 90% for at least 10 seconds. In subjects who had a desaturation at rest oxygen therapy it was prescribed for 24 hours slash day and in those who had a desaturation during exercise oxygen was prescribed during exercise and rest at night. In total they were enrolled 738 patients followed for 1-6 years, randomized to oxygen or non-oxygen therapy. The mean follow-up was 18 months. It was observed that there was no difference between the two groups regarding the deaths hospitalizations from all causes or related to cognitive exacerbations of respiratory disease. There were no differences either in terms of quality of life, lung function and the distance walked in six minutes. An accompanying editorial, 3, concludes that the oxygen therapy should not be prescribed routinely in patients with mild to moderate hyposemia during rest and exercise. However columnist admits that in selected patients who do not respond to the traditional criteria for prescribing oxygen therapy but who, despite optimal medical therapy, have moderate hyposemia during exercise, or lack of breath persistent attempts with oxygen can be done. A closed with which we totally agree, important are the results of the trials, but it should never be forgotten that the doctor, first of all, must treat the individual patient by customizing the maximum therapy.